So let's talk about setting password options on a Cisco device. Now we know that there are things that we'll normally set with password options on other devices, right? So we're going to set um, how often passwords should be changed, password minimum length, uh, things like that. Um, we can do some similar things here on a Cisco device. Now, there are two options. One of them is to use Radius or TACX authentication. With Radius authentication or TACX, which is the Cisco proprietary version, which we're not going to go over right now. That's We're going to save that for later. The idea is we would have the Cisco devices authenticate to a Radius server that would actually manage the usernames and passwords. But if we're setting them locally, there's a couple of things we can do here. So the first one, and this is a brand new configuration. So let's do a real uh, quick thing here. We're going to do config t um, line con zero. And I'm going to set a password of Cisco. All right. Uh, let me exit out of here and do a show run. And I'm going to show you one of the challenges with this. And that is. Um, by default, this password here for line con zero, not encrypted. So this leads us to one of the first things that we need to do, which is encrypt all passwords. And the way we do that is by using a service, it's service password dash encryption. I'm going to do EN because I feel like being lazy today. Now when I do a do show run, so it'll execute from here, I have my password encryption service. And now when I come down and look at my password, we'll notice that it's encrypted. Now that is not a high level of encryption. That is actually a fairly low level of encryption, unfortunately. But there is another way we can do it, but we can't do it. There's a better encryption that we can use, but we can't use it on line passwords. We can use it when we create a username and password and a local account database, or we can use it when we're doing a privileged exec mode password. And if you remember, that is enable and then you can do enable password but that's going to be your lower lower level one the better one is enable secret so i'm going to do an enable secret class and that's going to set my privileged exec mode password to class or my enable password as some people call it to class now if i do a show run you're going to see that that is actually much 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 better encrypted so that's my preferred way to do it with the enable secret now there's a drawback to using these generic passwords and that is when you're using these generic passwords everyone's going to have the same thing. Now you can set it up using the specific usernames and passwords and this is actually a better option. So I'm going to go back to my config mode and I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to say user and we're going to call it a standard user do full standard with a privileged exec mode or secret uh, and we'll use Cisco because we're being lazy. Uh, now if I do a show run, do show run to make it execute, I'm going to find right here username standard secret and they have that higher level of password. Now let me show you one other thing here. Uh, let me go to line con zero and I'm going to say login local. And that's going to tell it to log in using the local account database. Now, what we had before right here is it was actually wasn't even logging in. But just to sit there, login will say login using this line password. Login local says login using the user account database. So now if I exit all the way out and go to connect back in, I have to put in a username. So I did standard and Cisco and it puts me as a standard user exec mode and then I have to use my enable to elevate and my password in order to get that to that elevated password level. Now there's something else I can do here with these user accounts and that is I can create a user that automatically takes me in to privileged exec mode and this is how we're going to do that. It's user and I'm going to create this user admin. It could be anything, right? That's just the username. I'm using the generic admin. I'm going to set privilege level 15 and that's going to be the highest privilege level. Now I have to set privilege level before I set the password. Otherwise it thinks the privilege level is part of the password. And I'm going to do secret and we'll do class. Alright, now 
if I do a show run, you're going to see that we have two users, username admin that has privilege level 15 with a highly encrypted password, and the username standard, um, which doesn't have a privilege level, so it comes in at the lowest level. So now when I exit out, I can log in as admin with a password of class, and now I'm in privilege exec mode automatically. So that's kind of useful. Now remember that only works, creating those usernames only works if you set on your console line and then ultimately hopefully on your VTY lines when you're setting up SSH to log in using the local account database. Remember you can also do this using radius, but that's a configuration that we're not going to touch on right now. Okay, now a couple of other things that we're going to want to do. So we're going to want to use the secret instead of password to give us a higher level of encryption. We're going to want to use the service password encryption for things we can't do as secret. Another thing we can do is we can set a minimum length for our passwords. So let's go to config T and this is going to be the command. It's going to be security passwords min dash length. And I'm going to set it to 5 because that's kind of what I've been using. So now my passwords have a minimum length of 5. Now obviously I would want something more than that. Probably a minimum of 8, 10 would be better. Um, one other thing to bear in mind with uh, Cisco passwords is that they will accept spaces so you can use full passphrases instead of passwords. So that's kind of convenient because you can get longer, more complex and still um, have something that's relatively easy to remember. Okay, now I've set my secure, uh, minimum length of passwords. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to set in login blocking. So what that does is it blocks a login if somebody issues an incorrect password too many times within a certain time frame. Here's my command for that. It's login block 4, or you can just do login block if you don't want to do the block dash 4. Login block 4, and then I'm going to set the number of seconds. So let's say I want to block it for 5 minutes, so that would be 300 seconds. Login block 4 attempts says this is how many attempts you have to have, incorrect attempts, before it'll trigger the blocking. So I'm going to say we're going to allow three failed attempts. After the third failed attempt, it's going to block. Now the next question is how long of a period of time, I mean, are we talking three failed attempts within six months or 30 seconds? So that's what the keyword within sets. So it's login block four, number of seconds, attempts, how many attempts within, and let's say we're going to look for three failed attempts within 60 seconds. If you get three failed attempts within 60 seconds, then we're going to block you for five minutes. All right, and that sets up my blocking. Now, one other thing that we want to do, and this will be the last one we touch on in this video, that is we want to set up an exec timeout. So what happens here is if an administrator sits like I am right now, I'm sitting here idly, I'm not doing anything. Let's say I got up and I walked away from my station, forgot that I was logged in. Well, we'd want this to automatically log me out. And there is an exec timeout that's automatically set. It's about 10 minutes. But if I want to tighten that up, then what I'd do is I'd go to my lines that I wanted the exec timeout for. So let me go to line con zero. And I do this for my VTY lines as well. And I'm going to set an exec timeout. And then I can set it for the number of minutes and seconds. So I'm going to say exec timeout five. And that's going to give me a five minute exec timeout and here you'll see timeout in minutes so after five minutes of inactivity it's automatically going to log me out so let me do a show run here so we can see what we've got we've set password encryption we've set minimum length we've set a login block we've set a privileged exec mode password if somebody comes in using the standard account rather than the admin account, and I keep hitting the wrong key here and terminating my show run, um, we have come down to our console line. We've set an exec timeout and uh, a login local. So this password right here isn't even being used anymore. If I go back to a standard login rather than login using the local account database, then that would trigger.
All right, obviously I'm going to want to do SSH next, and I'm going to want to uh, enable that on my VTY line, set my exec timeout on my VTY lines. But at this point, we've given you most of what you need in order to set password policies on a Cisco device.